hopefully any progress today will be uh, good progress. Yo and hello. We just uh, picked up West Griff here, so. Who are these guys? Oh, there you he go. Hey, buddy. What's up? Oh. Excited? All fucked up. National scene. Not too bad, not too bad. A potential 4,998 left to go. What's up, everybody? Mike O. back with my day one recap of the 2023 National Sports Collectors Convention in Rosemont, Illinois. Perfect day. Um, just awesome. As usual, the National, and I, I think I've said it yesterday, and I'll say it every day, it is just an absolute blast. It's an awesome time. It's so much fun, and there's a reason why you look forward to it year in and year out, and so many people attend year in and year out at least whenever they can. It is absolutely awesome. Wednesday is usually a travel day for most people. Uh, getting here Tuesday night gave the full day, so I was able to get up, have some breakfast, kind of hang out for a little bit. Uh, staying with Big Scott 35, we were just kind of taking it easy, waiting for a storm to pass, and then we went out, grabbed our national credentials. Things weren't too crazy. We kind of got there at the perfect time where we were able to get in and out, didn't have to park or anything. So that was nice. And then it was just waiting for some of our fellow roommates to arrive. Had to pick Ed up from the airport and then meet up with Big Scott, uh, with um, Michael Fabian and Dave's Midlife Card Crisis. So we met up with them. We got into our Airbnb, kind of checked it out a little bit, got ourselves settled, and then headed over to the show. And it, uh, it worked out perfectly for me. I kind of took care of everything on my checklist had some stuff for Dave and Adams got that out of my hands real quick dropped some stuff off at SGC and then went over bought a couple boxes of Topps Chrome got my silver packs that was cool um, I opened the hobby box not the best but it's a it's a national tradition to open some Topps Chrome and it was fun to fun to get them so hopefully the jumbo box will be a little better and then after that, just kind of started walking around, looking at looking at stuff, meeting up with people. I mean, I ran into a ton of fellow YouTubers and, you know, had some five-minute conversations and then walked with a few people a few times. So that was pretty awesome. Uh, my SGC stuff was finished very quickly. It was promised by end of show. Getting it in early, I actually got both my orders, one for Ed and one for myself, back last night. So that was pretty cool as well. And then about a half hour before the show ended, I kind of ran into um, a guy I've seen at the Philly show before, a guy I've made some purchases from, and he always has a lot of really interesting stuff, things I'm looking for, and uh, we were able to work out a deal, so I will show that stuff off. I'll show off my pickups from day one right now. So like I said, very productive day at the National, accomplished some things I wanted to accomplish, and was able to pick up some stuff for the PC. So thrilled about that. Going to show off a few uh, few things I got from some YouTubers first, and I'll show off the purchases. First up is a Kyle Schwarber. This is from the Tops 206 set that just recently released. 
picked this one up from Big Scott 35. This was to complete a trade that we made right before the show. I traded a parallel of Cody Senga of the Mets for this Kyle Schwarber wood parallel, paper wood parallel. Both are definitely tough pulls out of the Tops 206 product, so very cool. And it was one of those easy, perfect trades. Senga fits Scott's PC, and Schwarber fits my PC, so thrilled to uh, do that. Received a pair of SGC slabs from Ed. Gift from Ed. 2020 Tops Heritage Chrome, numbered out of 999 of Bryce Harper in a Mint 9. Always like those Heritage Chrome. So that's perfect, again, for the Harper PC and the Phillies PC. And then Ed also hooked me up with this 2011 Tops Diamond Anniversary Parallel of Roy Halladay in an SGC9. Love this parallel, and this is the type of parallel that looks exceptional in the SGC slab. Gotta love that little bit of shine there with the black borders. 2010 Cy Young Award winner Roy Halladay. So, very cool. Zoom this out a little bit. There, we can actually see everything. Sweet. All right, and the last batch is a group of cards here. You can see a little brick here from Rick, Vintage Oddball Cards. Rick, appreciate it. Ran into Rick a few times. Saw so many fellow YouTubers. I mean, Brad... Ran into Brad, Amish Dave, Filmington. Walked around with Phil, Phil for quite a bit. Probably like a good hour or so. Um, so many more. This is Sweet Spot Beginnings of Jimmy Rollins. That is numbered out of 1,000. Tough lighting situation here. Big window back there with the uh, reflection. And then just a little bit of darkness. Some of these cards aren't going to pop, but sweet beginnings. I'll zoom that up real quick. Of Jimmy Rollins. It's from Upper Deck Sweet Spots. 2000 Rookies. Cliff Polite and Pat Burrell. That's Omega 2000, numbered out of 999. Pat Burrell had a brilliant career with the Phillies. He's a Phillies Wall of Famer, world champion with the Phillies. Uh, also went on and won a World Series with the San Francisco Giants. Cliff Polite, I think he hung around the big leagues for a few years as a reliever. I want to say St. Louis, the Phillies, maybe Toronto for a little while. But that's a cool one and definitely something I didn't have. Brandon Duckworth, numbered out of 1,500 from Sweet Spot. Scott Rowland, Mike Schmidt, classic combinations from Fleer Platinum. That is a sweet looking insert. Numbered out of 2,000. Thanks, Rick. Something I absolutely did not have. We got an auto here of Jorge Padilla. I don't believe he made it to the big leagues with the Phillies. He was in the farm system for a few years. Got a lot of cards, but never really made an impact in the big leagues. It's a Bowman Chrome Scout's Choice Pat Burrell. Uh, Bowman's best rookie card of Pat Burrell. Jorge Padilla out of 1500 from Donruss Elite. This is awesome. Gene Mock Auto, manager of the 64 Phillies. Heard stories about him all the time growing up. That's awesome. That's super cool and did not have an autograph, Rick. Knocking one off the checklist on the Phillies auto collection. So that's sweet. Love to get that one slab someday. And then an awesome Dallas Green auto. I do have some Dallas Green autos, but not on the 61 top. So that is a very, very cool card there. All right, next up, the purchase. So this was all bundled together, and this guy is really good to work with. So as soon as I saw him, I said, there's no doubt there's going to be some stuff I'm interested in. 
no doubt. And I know he's going to have it priced pretty fairly. And he's definitely going to work with me quite a bit. So that's exactly what happened. So I'll show off uh, the group. So this is a Scott Rowland uh, best autograph, Clearwater Phillies. This um, is something that he just threw in. He said, hey, do you like Scott Rowland? I'm like, yeah. I mean, he was really good Philly. Just inducted in the Hall of Fame. Like, it wasn't a card I'd be outright looking to purchase. But, um, yeah, absolutely. I'll take it as part of the deal for sure. So cool Scott Rowland auto from best. And then he threw in this Mike Schmidt. And this is actually from 2023 Tops Heritage. And it's one of the different box toppers. So they have a bunch of different box toppers you can get. Uh, the puzzles are pretty tough. They might even be like one a case, maybe two. There's a decent checklist. And they're just not super easy to find. Um, this is like 20, 30 bucks probably on eBay. He had it marked thirty dollars and threw it in as part of the deal, so definitely sweet. So I appreciate that. So this dealer's name is Derwad, and he's at booth six hundred two. So he is, if you walk in the main doors, he's pretty easy to find. He's um, booth six hundred two, like I said. So it should be right around aisle, I think six hundred. Um, and if you like some of the vintage oddball stuff, you know. He's got some neat stuff there. He's got some pre-war, and then he has some modern stuff now, too, um, some of the hotter cards. Let me show off the rest of what I picked off. First of all, you see something in the background here. Um, this is the Spalding Baseball Advisory Staff of Richie Allen. It's a 8.5 by 11, maybe. I don't think it's 8 by 10. 8.5 by 11. Um, that's super cool. I mean, I, I like these larger uh items you know promotional items great photo so always thrilled to add a richie allen to the collection he actually had a johnny callison as well um i probably could have gotten that one tossed in at a you know decent price and it's tempting because it's a very cool item but you know at some point you gotta cut yourself off a little bit so the richie allen's awesome that is just Beautiful for the collection. I'm thrilled to have that. Also, picked up it's Johnny Callison. It's also with Jim Lomborg and um, Bob Aspermonte from Houston. The action. So that's awesome. Say like one of the tabs, I think they came with three together, but just thought it was cool to add a Johnny Callison. So happy about that. And then 1969 Top Super. It's the Richie Allen. This was one I was definitely very interested in. Condition's not great on it. Um, it's going to be hard to see with the glare in the holder, but definitely some issues in there. But, you know, if you hold it at a certain length, like, honestly, it really doesn't stand out whatsoever. He had a couple more of these uh, Phillies-related ones. Now, had a bunch of, you know, had guys like Bob Gibson, stuff like that. Uh, Phillies, he had Cookie Rojas, which is a great image, and that was, that was very cool. And then uh, Chris Short. I was kind of interested in the Cookie Rojas as well. Those were great at mint nine. This one, I would assume, would get, I don't know, four or five, I would think. But that's very cool. Super happy to add that. And then the last item, um, part of this deal, 1967 Tops Punch-Outs, Richie Allen, SGC 84, near mint seven. So very cool. Team captain, Richie Allen for the National League see the list of names there and obviously a lot of these got used and punched out and all that stuff so here's the instructions so very very cool card to add to the Phillies collection so that is it for the pickups day one uh, very happy 
like I said, felt like things kind of went perfectly, except for uh, dropping the cards under the table. But, you know, at least they're in protectors. No, it, it was really good. Like, met up with a ton of people, was able to catch up and socialize a little bit, able to casually look at cards and relax, able to work out a deal, pick up some stuff for the collection, able to go out to dinner, and then uh, take care of some of the things like the graded stuff. So it kind of just makes things feel pretty good for the remainder of the show where you feel like, you know what? I kind of accomplished what I wanted. Uh, the only other things I'm really looking for specifically, you know, and as much as I'd love to add, you know, all sorts of awesome Hall of Fame vintage stuff and some of the brand new stuff, what I'm really looking for is maybe some cool pre-war Phillies item that I could knock off the list and then you know if I found any of the super short prints from this year's tops of Phillies ones I needed that would uh, kind of complete everything I kind of wanted to do so it's been awesome and I'm looking forward to uh, day number two right now <laughs>